The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Romans 5.5 5. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Good afternoon, and a very warm welcome to all of you, whoever you are, and wherever you find yourself on the journey, and wherever you find yourself watching this noonday prayer. My name is Markus Dunskufer, and I'm the rector of St. John's. Today, we celebrate Bernard of Clairvaux. Bernard was the 12th century abbot of Clairvaux, a French monastery which under his leadership became a center of the spiritual revival known as the Cistercian Movement. Bernard came from a noble family famous for its military prowess, but at the age of 22, he underwent a conversion to the monastic life and entered the newly founded Cistercian Order. He channeled all the energy, aggressiveness, and brilliance of his warrior heritage into love for God, care for the mystical tradition of the Church, and preaching. And for the next 40 years, Bernard's eloquent voice dominated the Western Church as his sermons and treatises renewed the theology of the spiritual life which it had received from the ancient Latin fathers. His prestige as spiritual teacher also gave him enormous authority when it came to shaping the policies of the Church. His endorsement ensured that one candidate in a papal election triumphed over the other who had been favored to win. And Bernard's preaching throughout France in 1147 brought about a massive popular response to the Pope's call for a second crusade against the Muslims, which does make him a not unproblematic saint in our days, and shows once again that even those we hold up as examples in the life of the Church are not omniscient and might get things wrong at times. Even as he was committed to monastic separation from the world, Bernard of Clairvaux had tremendous influence on the life and imagination of 12th century Europe, and we honor him today because he used that influence to renew in his own age the ageless thirst for that love which is above all other loves which God has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 10. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the winds of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. Almighty and everlasting God, you kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your servant Bernard, so that he became a shining light in the midst of your church. Kindle in us such faith, that by deeds of love we may show forth the light of Christ, and rouse this present age to desire your perfect beauty, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. A reading from John. Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from a sermon on the Song of Songs by Bernard of Clairvaux. Love is sufficient of itself. It gives pleasure by itself and because of itself. It is its own merit, its own reward. Love looks for no cause outside itself, no effect beyond itself. Its profit lies in its practice. I love because I love. I love that I may love. Love is a great thing so long as it continually returns to its fountainhead, flows back to its source, always drawing from there the water which constantly replenishes it. Of all the movements, sensations, and feelings of the soul, love is the only one in which the creature can respond to the creator and make some sort of similar return, however unequal though it be. For when God loves, all he desires is to be loved in return. The sole purpose of his love is to be loved, in the knowledge that those who love him are made happy by their love of him. The bridegroom's love, or rather the love which is the bridegroom, asks in return nothing but faithful love. Let the beloved, then, love in return. Should not a bride love, and above all, love's bride? Could it be that love not be loved? Rightly, then, does she give up all other feelings, and give herself wholly to love alone, in giving love back, all she can do is to respond to love. And when she has poured out her whole being in love, what is that in comparison with the unceasing torrent of that original source? Clearly, lover and love, soul and word 
bride and bridegroom, creature and creator, do not flow with the same volume. One might as well equate a thirsty man with a fountain. What then of the bride's hope, her aching desire, her passionate love, her confident assurance? Is all this to wield just because she cannot match stride for stride with her giant? Any more than she can vie with honey for sweetness? Rival the lamb for gentleness, show herself as white as the liberty, burn as bright as the sun, be equal in love with him who is love? No. It is true that the creature loves less because she is less. But if she loves with her whole being, nothing is lacking where everything is given. To love so ardently, then, is to share the marriage bond. She cannot love so much and not be totally loved. And it is in the perfect union of two hearts that complete and perfect marriage consists. Or are we to doubt that the soul is loved by the word first and with a greater love? Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is a true saying and worthy by all to be received. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us bring to mind those times in our lives when we failed God, God's love, and God's will for our lives. When we fail God's image in ourselves and in others, and when we failed God's call to be good stewards of creation. And in a moment of silence, let us ask God for the forgiveness of our sin. Curia eleison, Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. Curia eleison, Lord have mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. May God, our true Father and our true Mother, through the power of the Holy Spirit, forgive us our sins. Welcome us home once again. Protect us against all evil. Heal what is broken in us and through us. And lead us to everlasting life and eternal bless. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and teach her counselors wisdom. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. 
Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Give your people the blessing of peace, and may all the earth be filled with your glory. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. This time I invite your prayers and intercessions. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and praises. As we remember Bernard of Clairvaux, let us pray for monastic vocations, even in our age. Let us pray that the spirit and witness of the monastic and religious life may enrich our church in our days. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>